Back in Iowa City, it is third and six for Purdue. And for Fred Jackson, the offensive coordinator, a tough call over here. Eric Hunter pulls straight back and throws complete to number 10. And that was John Oglesby who slipped out of the backfield as a receiver and gets Purdue another first down. See what they did? They got on a triple formation. Three receivers to one side of the field. Then they sneak the running back out away from the three wide receivers. Good call by Fred Jackson, the man you saw on the screen just a second ago, the offensive coordinator. Hunter now, four of seven for Purdue. They're down by a touchdown. They have the ball again across midfield. First and 10 for Purdue at the Iowa 47-yard line. Hunter, stand up with time, hits Hill, Hanks hammers him out of bounds at the 43-yard line. But hit Hunter is starting to get some rhythm. He's starting to get the rhythm. Fred Jackson, the coordinator, told us the number thing, one thing he wanted to do is to move the quarterback around so the defensive rush cannot zero in on where he's throwing the ball from. Offensive coordinator on the far side for the Boilermakers. This is the man we were just talking about. Then the next thing he wanted to do, he said, we want to attack. We don't want to come here and play passive football. We want to get after him. And that's what they're trying to do. Purdue down by seven. Into Iowa territory. Bumble! Bumble! Iowa! Leroy Smith. It's a deep toss. Now the motion will be coming from the left of your screen. He tosses it back, and he tosses it back a little bit behind him, but the young freshman, Hill, was looking at where he was going to run before he caught the ball. You've got to catch it. Now watch number six eye. See him look forward and then look back to the ball. He took his eye off the ball. He drops the football. Iowa first and ten. You have to keep your eye on the football. It's so fundamental. Jeff Hill has dropped a pass. Now he fumbles it away. First and ten for Iowa. Hawkeyes on their own 48-yard line. Rodgers on first down with plenty of time. It's Sean Smith inside the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Hawks after a 15-yard gain. You can see Carl Jackson, the offensive coordinator for Iowa's game plan unfolding here. He wants to run crossing patterns against the man-to-man -man coverage. You need time to run the crossing patterns. They are giving him time. They're completing them. They're big gainers. Mike Saunders brings the play in from Hayden Fry's sideline. Hawks seven, Purdue nothing, first half. He's been perfect so far. Stewart. Let's go meet Mark Jones, who's with Tony's mother, Mark. Thanks a lot, Brent. I'm with Mrs. Stewart, one of six family members to make the trip from New Jersey to watch Tony perform today. He's closing in on the all-time leading rusher, rushing record here at uh, Iowa. Has he talked about it with you? Just a little bit. You know, he doesn't really talk about it that great. <laughs> Brent Dick, uh, Tony's mother says that she wasn't too fond about the tattoo that he got on his leg. Well, I got used to it after yet last week. It's okay now. <laughs> Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Mark, very much. And here's a handoff to Montgomery. Cut off, sweeping to the left, and down at the 30-yard line. That was a real nice job of playing defensive end by Peyton Minner, number 99. Here's that tattoo. <laughs> Look at the rose in his mouth. Pretty confident. Huh? It's an ugly thing. <laughs> <Third down. laughs> I already told you last week. I thought that was a husky. With that rose. <laughs> and then the husky's going blowing the use of all. Third down. Purdue shows blitz. They're coming on Montgomery, and he's short of the first down. It'll be fourth down for Iowa. And that was Jeff Scanina, if the leading punt, tackler. If they punt the ball from here, they may only gain 10 yards. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. 
See, they're on the 30-yard line. They punted in the end zone. It comes out to the 20. It's hard from this 30-yard line to punt the ball inside the goal line. I think they're going to go for it. Yep, here comes Dannon Hughes, number three, in with the offensive call. Be a good spot for a little razzle-dazzle. Throw a back to the quarterback. Something a little wild. A little exotic down here this time. Fourth down now. Stewart and Montgomery in a backfield. The draw. Stewart, first down. It's going to depend on where they spot it. It's going to be very close because Jarrett Scales came up real strong defensively. Wherever they put it down, that's going to determine. I can remember what Hayden Fry told us yesterday in regard to the tight measurement. It depends which foot the official on the sideline comes out and marks the ball with. I don't think it's close. <laughs> I don't think he made it. <laughs> They didn't make it. That's a big lift for Purdue. Emotionally, when a team comes into a stadium like this way, with the odds against them, the points against them, and they do things like this, it keeps building their confidence. Some nice plays by this defense. It's only a seven-point Iowa lead. Well, there's number three, Jared Scales, who just came up with a strong defensive effort to give the ball back to the Boilermakers as a fourth down gamble doesn't make it for Iowa. Guy seven will do nothing. First and ten. Hunter on a short drop has time. Comes out to Oglesby for a first down. Let's take another look at Scales' defensive hit here, Dick. You'll see it was a draw play to the, to the left side of your screen. He gets up in the hole. Beatty comes inside out, gives him a first shot. He gets off that tackle. Now Scales gets the pads up underneath him, props him up, and knocks him back. Now, from the angle, it looks like maybe they made the marker, but... The angle is deceiving. They didn't make it. That was an awfully good job by that cornerback, Jarrett Scales, number three. First down at the Purdue 45-yard line. And 17 more yards of offense for Eric Hunter. Hunter doesn't figure to be real dangerous running the ball today because of that injured knee. But he can throw it complete. And into Iowa territory again with Ernest Callaway, the receiver. And it's another first down. You'll see they came after him with the linebacker right here. They came after him, and they hit him in the seam as quick as they could. A good read by Hunter. See the linebacker come? Now he pops it to him quickly. There it is. That was a tough catch, too. That was an awfully nice job by Callaway. I want to mention to some of our audience that it was true that briefly, we got to see part of that UCLA-USC game, which we are covering on a regional basis, and then we came back there. I think what you missed was probably one completed pass by Hunter, who has now completed seven straight passes. He is into his rhythm. Diving try, and he's got it on that far side. Curtis McManus, number 37, and Hunter is red hot if Purdue can finish anything off. This young man, a sophomore, leading the Big Ten in total offense. If you allow him to get hot, there's that little stop roll action. He can rifle that football. He throws it low into the outside where he had to throw it to prevent the defender from getting there. If you allow this guy to gain confidence, it, this game is going to be a tight one all the way down to the finish. It looked like maybe he trapped the ball, but I, the official was closer than I am. Let's take a look. Here's the ball moving to the middle of your screen, to the right of your screen. Now he pulled it off the turf. Good job by McManus. Second and short after that completed pass. And this time they run the ball, and they will be close to a first down. Galen Morrow was the running back. They're going to measure with the style of offense that Purdue runs, this run and shoot, and their version of the run and shoot. See, you don't see it any other time in the Big Ten. So you come in and prepare for it in one week, in three days, it can drive you crazy. It's similar to a team running the wishbone, and you never see that until the day that you pay them. It is tough to duplicate that on a practice field so your defensive team can get in rhythm to defensing it. And they're having problems right now. And with this guy, Hunter, I think, and you said this the other day when we were watching tape, Brent, that. He's about as talented a player as we have seen from a total athletic standpoint at that position this year. First and 10 for Purdue. Ball just inside the Iowa 30-yard line. 
Hunter, again with time, throws another one complete to the 20-yard line. Jermaine Ross, and that's nine straight. <laughs> Jermaine Ross, he's a walk-on. He came to school without a scholarship. He's working his way on there. He's starting as a sophomore. He didn't play last year. It was like a red shirt, so he has this year. He has three more years after this. Member of the National Honor Society in high school. He's an engineering major. Very bright young man. Rod Dennis, 81, replaces him. Four wide receivers in the run and shoot. Second and short. Oh, oh nice job. Pins away from John Derby and into the arms of Melvin Foster. Yeah, John Derby gets after you. He really gets after you. He's the quiet guy, sort of the overachiever type guy. Doesn't say a lot. He just hits you and knocks you on your back. Take a look at this. You're right there in the trenches. He'd move it. You'll see there. You'll see him flashing to the screen. There's Rulin. There he is coming inside out on that play. Did a real nice job. This is third and less than a yard. Oglesby is the lone running back. And there was movement on the right side of the offensive line before the ball was snapped. Iowa was very late in lining up. They looked confused. There was nothing to be confused about, but they were looking over each other's shoulder. All they would have had to do was snap the ball quickly, and they made it easily. Good ball. Ball start. That is a big mistake by Purdue. Ball is now back to the 25 and I would suggest Dick that perhaps as we look at this rushing defense Hunter will have to put it up because of this rushing defense I'm sure in this situation but I would suggest that maybe the center snapped the ball late the way the rest of that line jumped out of there it looked that way the Bob Dressel is the center they may have made a substitute in the middle down there and Hunter changes up at the line of scrimmage Needs six yards for a first down. Now, the run and shoot under the new rule, the wide receivers don't have to hear it. It's going to be an official's timeout. And I believe Quinn is going to explain to him that under the change in the rules, the wide receivers do not have to hear the audible. First problem. That's the first warning. Now, Nick Namula came in at offensive center after that last snap. Evidently, Bob Dressel hurt himself. Now, Bob Dressel has been injured. There's the offensive coordinator, Fred Jackson. Game plan in his hand. I think Quinn is telling Hunter that he's going to have to go ahead because the wide men are not included. Seven yards outside of those tackles. They do not have to hear under the change in rules this year. What a quarterback has to do with his wide receivers is use hand signals to relay it. Pennick Stadium is notorious as the noisiest field in the Big Ten. Now they need six yards for a first down. They trail it by a touchdown. Hawkeyes left blitz, and Hunter says he can't be hurt again as he makes the call at the line. Quinn will give him the benefit of the doubt. He agrees with him this time completely. You could tell by the way he was shaking his head. That's the second foul move. Second foul move. Here comes the warning from the PA. and a charge timeout on the defensive team. Now, we were here last week and didn't have this problem. <laughs> Greg Fry had it a couple of times. <laughs> Listen to what the crowd is doing. We have your attention with Patty Allen. Patty Allen, please go to the nearest security officer. Patty Allen, please go to the nearest security officer. 
Jackson up to the line, needing six yards. It's third down. Second quarter, Iowa seven, Purdue nothing. Hunter with time. Complete for the first down and out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Curtis McManus and Hunter is starting to carve up that Iowa secondary. They're not getting the pressure on him that they got initially in the, uh, the first quarter. You can see here that he does have some time. He'll come out on that half roll and set up close to the line of scrimmage, but no one's in his face. He's just setting up there. One, two, three. Pause, pause, pause. Throw. Good time. Good job. Completed to the out pattern all the way across the field. That's a long throw. Dick, how much do the Hawkeyes miss number 54, Rod Davis, who's well, playing at the nose today? Rod Davis is a better pass rusher than Mike Wells at the nose. First and 10. Ball is at the 13. Blitz is picked up. Hunter with his strength gets it off incomplete. Off the one hand of McManus. But you saw some of that great athletic ability of the quarterback that time. Watch the rush man get a hand on him, and he'll still come up firing. He wanted to throw the slant pattern to the right of the your left of your screen area. You see, there's a little pressure behind him. He pumps, 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 and there's the slant. It's just slightly out in front of McManus. If he'd have thrown that ball on rhythm right when he broke for the slant, I think he had it. Eric Hunter, the sophomore from Virginia, had completed 10 in a row before that miss. Now second and 10. Ball at the Iowa 13-yard line. They're coming after him. The Bears inside. And Iowa pounces on an incomplete pass. That's what that is. That's not a fumble. That's the old shuffle pass. The only, if he caught it before it hit the ground, it would be Iowa's ball. But I think the ball hit the turf. Take incomplete a look. pass is the ruling. You'll see the quarterback goes back. Now watch him flip the ball back up underneath. There it is. The ball's batted around. He's sacked. He doesn't have the ball. It's downfield. It's Jason Dumont, number 97 who was coming with the pressure both times and now he comes off to the side number six Scott Plate an extra defensive back replaces him they added a rushman we'll be right back eight minutes and 33 seconds to go in the first half with Mark Jones and Dick Vermeil I'm Brent Musburger Purdue and Freddie Akers trailing Iowa seven to nothing and with a third and 10 at the ball at the Hawkeyes 13 yard line. Sophomore Eric Hunter running the run and shoot. They've converted three in a row on third down, but third and 10 down here in this intense area of the red zone is much tougher area. Less area to defend. Oh, the left tackle move. The left tackle, number 53, picked up his hand and came back for Anopolis, and that will cost Purdue five yards. Now he wishes he was on defense. He was a defensive tackle last year. Dead ball. Ball starts. Oh. The only thing he's done is given his offensive people five more yards to run their routes downfield. That's about the only positive you can come out with that in that play. Now it's third and 15. Ball at the Hawkeye 18-yard line. Hunter. Deflected and caught by a lineman after it was deflected. So it's completed, but it's going to leave them in fourth and long as Larry Taylor caught the pass, but it will cost them several yards. Dick, would it have been the wiser if he had knocked it down when an <laughs> offensive lineman has the ball in this situation? Yeah, well, it makes a difference in the distance they have for the field goal. Normally, you just get the ball to the ground, but you're, you're always worried about it getting batted one more time and in somebody else's hands. In this case, it would be Iowa's hands. Here comes Steve Wombold, who didn't kick a ball all week because of chicken pox. He's another one of me to make sure I pass that along. They didn't want anybody to think that her son is ugly. <laughs> he came up to me and told me that yesterday. So, Steve, message is delivered. And the field goal is on the money. The barefooted field goal specialist with a 39-yarder. And Purdue staying alive here, Dick. Let's get an overview from you. A lot of our folks may not have watched the start of this game. What's your feeling about what's happening here? They're much more alive than the 26-point 
favored uh, is really. I mean, they're in a situation, they're moving the ball, throwing the ball with their run and shoot. They have the defense spread out. There's a lot of seams in there, and Hunter is hitting those seams because he's been given time. They're alive in this football game, very much alive. Your feeling about the way Iowa is playing so far? Well, with four wide receivers spread out and seven guys defensively bunched in there, if they're going to stay in there, they can bring seven because they only have six people to block and they can get pressure on them that way and take a chance a little bit more often playing one-on-one -on -one coverage. And you're feeling about Hayden Fry's offense right now. I think, actually, I think on third down situations, they've, they're have they playing a little bit defensively, trying maybe not to lose and, and not quite as wide open as they have been in other ball games. To be fair to say that they have not quite gotten over last Saturday's stunner at the hands of the Buckeyes? Well, that, I think that's always, you know, going to linger a little bit, but I, I don't think that's a factor right down on the field right now. I think the factor on the field now is you're playing a team that's not supposed to be as good, and you, you may be overcautious. Five-yard penalty against Wombo, who couldn't stand prosperity. Well, a reminder that coming up at halftime, Corey McFerrin is back at our ABC studios in New York. He'll have all the scores and highlights. And Beth Royak will take a look at that Fiesta Bowl fuss. And we'll have the Prudential Play of the Week. And also a news report from ABC, President Bush's visit to Prague. That's all coming up at halftime right here. We have 7.38 to go in the first half. Iowa 7, Purdue 3. The Hawkeyes in the driver's seat for the Rose Bowl, needing to win today and then again against Minnesota. They've accepted a penalty, be a five-yard penalty, three kicks. We've had such yeah. turmoil with the top five teams this year, Dick, but Notre Dame figures to be the only one of the top five which could lose today as USC, with a two-point conversion, now has a 14-7 lead, and Ohio State needs a win at Madison to stay alive in their quest for the bowl. The next week, we'll take you to Columbus, Ohio at noon for the annual Ohio State Michigan game. I think a little of that uh, moving around in the top five and somebody getting beat is all, I think goes back all the way to limiting the number of scholarships and spreading the players around more schools. Hughes will field this one at the four. The 20, 25, 33. Mark Jones, what have you got? Well, guys, it's a noisy house here, and I was speaking with Coach Jackson of Purdue, the offensive coordinator. He says that they're using hand signals to get the count out to the receivers, but the problem is that with the interior linemen, they can't hear, and consequently, they're pulling out the ball and getting called for offside. But so far, the mood on the Purdue bench, very up. Eric Hunter walking around patching each of his linemen on the back saying, hey, guys, let's kick some. Back to you guys. Wide receivers don't have to hear the snap count. All they have to do is look in and watch the ball move for them to get off on the ball in time. Bell, Montgomery, Smith coming in motion, Rogers with plenty of time. Fires complete to Montgomery to the 43-yard line and a couple of yards shy of a first down with Scanina bringing him down. This is really not what they wanted to do. Montgomery was in the middle of your screen back behind the quarterback. They wanted to run crossing patterns. Now, see the receivers crossing against the man-to-man -man and pick one of the defenders off. It's not there. Great pass protection. Way too much time versus that man-to-man. -man. He dumps it off. He gets a block right there. And here's Montgomery moving the ball upfield. Rodgers getting well over 10 yards an attempt. 52 yards with four straight completions there. I think they're starting to open it up just a little bit. Yes, they are. Here they come, firing again. Oh. This one is incomplete. That was not a good throw. That was on Rodgers all the way. You, when you're running a flat pattern away from the quarterback, you can't throw it low and behind him. You've got to get it out in front of him and keeping moving away from the coverage. His first miss of the day as Bell, who was slightly shaken up when he took a blow to the helmet, has returned. What Don you, Patterson, excuse me, Frank. The Don Patterson, the quarterback coach, for uh, Iowa says Matt Rogers is is very accurate. He very seldom throws the, the poor ball like that one. He says he's tough. He reminds him a lot of Chuck Long, the great quarterback of the years past. Chuck Long carved up a pretty acres Texas secondary once with six touchdown passes in a bowl game. Complete the bell, first down. See, he still threw that ball behind him. When you're running that flat pattern, you got to throw it out in front of him. 
Well, the Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week is brought to you by American Honda, who is proud to support amateur athletics. And this week's award goes to Glenn Milburn, that sophomore halfback, all-purpose runner from Stanford. Helped upset Arizona, rushing for 142 yards on 20 carries. And Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Stanford University. Majoring in industrial engineering with a grade point average of 3.0 out of Santa Monica, California. First and 10 for Rodgers and the Hawkeyes. Off a pump fake. Oh, he steps up. Fires incomplete. Had a man. You see, he had John Floon, number 82, downfield. Uh, really had him open, but he just, he didn't see him. We're going to take a look at an ISO right now. On You'll see what I'm talking about. John Floon, number 82. Here he is coming off the line of scrimmage. He goes inside, drift. There he is. They turn him loose going down there. The safety, in this case, Nat Martin is not in position. He, he really had a, a, a nice shot at, if he could have gotten it to him. Bell is limping off the field. Remember, he had a little ankle strain last week in the ball game. It's going to be after Montgomery and Stewart. Carry the load here of the running game. This is a little counter with Stewart against the outside. Penalty flag is down. Might be clipping or holding at the line. If not, the Hawkeyes will have a first down at the Purdue 26. But the flag was thrown back here at the line of scrimmage as Stewart was coming to the outside. Here comes Quinn. The ball is coming back. I think they called holding on the offensive guard who pulled around. You'll see a big offensive lineman on the left side of your screen pulled to the right. Here he comes pulling her out. This is Greg Agater, and I think he actually hooked the guy, and they see he grabbed him right there. Greg, uh, that was actually... McNeil is complaining I as he turned around to get pursuit. McNeil claiming that he was held up there at I that think line. it was Scott Davis that got all the way around there, not Greg Agater that uh, actually grabbed hold of the guy. He had his arms out. Of course, they, you know, college now, it looks like they hold every other snap. So the ball is brought back to the Iowa 37-yard line. Second down and a bunch for Rodgers and the Hawkeyes. There Steps into the middle, and he has him this time. First down for Iowa, John Falloon. Again, one of those crossing patterns that takes a lot of time. I, the only way Purdue can stop this is once in a while come up with a zone defense so they're not chasing people all the way across the field. You'll see the pattern will be coming from the right side of your screen. And they're going to cross here. They've got people crossing here. Here comes Balloon. You'll see him at the bottom of your screen. Actually, that time they were in a zone defense. Just not played very well. 24-yard gain. Fiawa at fullback. Fumble by Stewart. He picks it up. Tries to cut back the other way. Breaks a tackle. Nice to the 40. To the 39-yard line. Brent, that was going to be reversed. You know what Stewart was thinking? I've got to catch this ball. I've got to catch this ball. Then I'm going to hand it to the flanker back coming in a reverse. The flanker back will be coming from the right of your screen. He tosses it deep. See, now he's thinking about right now, instead of running, he's thinking about handing it off. See the flanker right there, number three, Dan and Hughes? Catches the ball first. Executes the first part of the play and then go on with the rest. Might have been a big play. Wound up being a one-man reverse. Yeah, one -man. Hey, sometimes those work pretty good. Second down and 10. Ball at the Purdue 39. 5.15 to go first half. Rodgers changes up at the line of scrimmage. Titley the stand-up tight end down there toward the bottom of your screen. Penalty marker comes down again. Complete to the far side. Nice 12 catch. yards. And John Falloon getting the job done, but there is a penalty marker thrown back at the line of scrimmage by one of the side judges. So they will take the game this time, and that will give the Hawkeyes 
a first down at the Purdue 28 yard line and next Saturday the annual battle between Michigan Ohio State at noon Eastern time and then later Notre Dame and USC 8 p.m. Eastern time or 7 o'clock here in the mighty Midwest. See, you can see that Hayden Fry has opened up his offense now, not quite as conservative. He, he started slow. He's drilling into the more the Iowa rhythm of moving the football, and they are moving it in chunks. Hughes goes into the slot on the left. Comes in motion, taps Rodgers as he goes by. He's got it. Out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Again, man-to-man -man coverage. They have to chase that guy across the field most of the time. And uh, you'll see him chasing him across, and he's back off the line of scrimmage. So they just flip him the ball quickly. See, he comes out there and flips the ball quickly to the receiver that had crossed in motion, and the defender, Jackson, is chasing him across the field. That's positive game football. Just simple, very, very simple execution. We've got a timeout called by the Purdue defense. Four minutes and 59 seconds to go. 7-3 Iowa. We'll be coming right back. Iowa 7, Purdue 3. Just inside of five minutes left. Purdue with a second and one. Stewart may not have made it as Tommy McNeil, number 57, at the point of attack, getting the job done for the Boilermakers. He's their leading tackler coming into the game with 100 tackles. He's a transfer from Butler Community College, Kansas. Second team All-American in junior college football. And they're very pleased with the progress he's made this year. This chain gang getting a little exercise here in the first half of this one. Yeah. I'll tell you something. With Nick Bell right now out with a, a slightly injured ankle, Tony Stewart may have a shot at setting the all-time rushing record today. He needs 134 yards to break the record held by Owen Gill. He might get it if he gets to play the whole game. He's got seven for 27 right now. Hayden Fry with the option of going on fourth and short, which is what he will do. Not attempting the field goal in this situation. He leads it 7-3. You know, in this type of situation, you can fool around with third and inches and say, I'm going to go up fourth and inches if I don't make it. And if they were going to do that, they would do it with their big, they'd do it with the big tight end right here. They'd fool around with him. There was movement by that defensive line again. Oh, Chris Burns. Chris Burns just, just wanted to get after him. Chris Burns is a member of the National Honor Society in high school. He's a liberal arts major, so you know he's smart enough to know not to do that. You know what happens, Fred, to a defensive player? He knows they've only got inches to go. He's getting the weight on his hand. He's getting ready to grunt and come off the ball, and he does it just a little too soon. A first and 10 for Iowa. The ball is put down at the Purdue 13-yard line. Two weeks ago against Illinois, Stewart threw for a touchdown. Wide side of the field is off to the quarterback, Rogers left. A beautiful fake. Looking for Hughes. You can see how tough it is to defend a play-action pass. See the fakes inside. It looks run. There's Scania, number 40, gets in, gets a good heat. But no help inside on Scales. He needed a safety in there to help him. You see, he's trying to cover him inside. Now he gives him a little juke move outside, beats him inside. No safety there. Boy, that's tough coverage if you don't have help inside. Wow. Should be a free safety there unless they were in dog coverage, meaning rushing linebackers. Skillet adds the extra point. So Matt Rogers throws for two touchdowns, giving him 11 for the season. And again, it was this fake right at the start of this play that gets the job done here. Skinny number 40 gets in there, but Rogers hangs in there tough and gets the post right down the hole. 
No help inside. If you have no help inside as a cornerback, you better line up inside and don't allow that guy in there. See, it was just too easy to get in there. I don't know if Scales was expecting help, but if he was expecting it, he didn't get it. Boy, you can see what's happened since Hayden Fry has opened up the attack. Monday night, let me ask you about this one. The Raiders and the Dolphins there. Well, I, I <laughs> you put me on the spot there. The way the Dolphins are playing right now, I'd have to, I'd say, uh, I'd go with the Dolphins. I talked to Mike White, who's coaching the quarterback of the Raiders this week, and he felt they came out of the layoff, you know, sluggish and haven't gotten their motors running again the last couple of weeks, but anticipates them playing like son of a guns on Monday night against the Dolphins. 4-13, and Iowa hopes to prevent the ricochet touchdown here in the closing minutes of the first half. Yeah, last, last week, Ohio State scored on the last play of the first half and the last play of the game. They can't let that happen again. Four thirteen to go, and five yards will be marked off. We'll bring it all the way back. And a reminder that tomorrow on ABC, the top tennis players in the world in the final showcase of the year. Alex Agassi, a winner today. And folks, in that promo, that's the only time you'll see him wearing such conservative Andre Agassi live tomorrow at 1 Eastern. Well, you're, well, you're I'm not a football game. You're allowed to say Alex Agassi I'm, in the I'm, Big Ten. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the golf. There we are. Greg Norman. And that's for a great charity, too. He'll host that tournament tomorrow at 4 Eastern. Play for <laughs> he was a great Aussie <laughs> rules player. Doesn't he, doesn't he punt that golf ball on yeah, the line? So. Well, he does punt it. <laughs> Alex Agassi. <laughs> He's going to be after to hear that ass. Oh, there he comes. <laughs> Callaway at the 15 yard line. did a good job of stripping it number 32 Mike Sanders did Mike Sanders a wide receiver running back guy you don't see many wide receivers that do cover kickoffs like that that is a big big play change in field position first down on the 26 yard line you'll see it flash from the right side of your screen here he comes he starts up inside here he comes boom he strips him. it went right out underneath the elbow and anytime you get your elbow out away from the body and that's the arm you're carrying the ball in and you get hit you're going to fumble the football that's the cardinal sin great you'll see what i'm talking recovery. about right here now freeze it right there oh we couldn't get it frozen there in time but you'll see the elbow just get out there chance to strike again quickly on a cut back by stewart to the 24-yard line. Plenty of time here for Iowa. Four minutes. Tom McNeil, who's been a busy linebacker, makes another stop. It's 14 to three. Iowa leading and two victories away from Pasadena. A win here and a win next Saturday up in the Twin Cities against Minnesota. And Iowa will go to the Rose Bowl to play Washington. Bill Bennett, the defensive coordinator for Purdue, said they were going to move the fronts around on the weak side to try to prevent the cutback running, and it has helped. They have really slowed down the running game. Montgomery and a penalty box. Holding, called against Iowa. You know something? <laughs> you get the holding penalty, it almost forces them to throw the ball, and that's what they're doing best today. <laughs> Here's Coach Fred Akers. Boy, he had tremendous success at uh, Texas over the years. Down there, with 10 years, nine different bowl games. Six seasons of winning more than nine games. 86 wins, 31 losses, 72% winner. That's a pretty good percentage. Tough to do. He needs my old buddy Alex Agassi as a line coach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Alex was, uh, he was once a head coach at Purdue. 
You bet. He was an All-American out of Purdue, too. I know my Purdue history. Rogers is back. Standing in the middle. Throws incomplete. Good defense that time. Nice job by Terry Johnson. He had all the time in the world, Rogers, that is, had all the time in the world to throw the patterns downfield. Good coverage by Purdue. Good coverage by strong safety Terry Johnson, right where he had to be. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not easy. That's a good receiver. He's covering. He stays right there. Watch him move in there. Use that hand properly. Doesn't interfere with him in any way. Good technique. Good coaching by the secondary coach, Greg Brown. Third and long for Iowa. Complete the Sanders at the 20, but short of that first down as Steve Jackson was there in a hurry. Those crossing patterns. Here he is up on the top corner. He's going to come all the way across where other receivers cross underneath. They take a lot of time. But if they get him in the right coverage, you see people chasing man to man. If you get the time, you can complete him. And this is not a poorly covered pattern. Jackson was right there. Timeout, Iowa. Two timeouts left. So let's check in on what ABC has coming your way on prime time. And don't forget that Andre Agassi is coming your way <laughs> tomorrow. 14-3. Iowa over Purdue. Stephen King coming to network television. Now that'll scare a few folks before that one's over. We got 238 to go here in the first half. Dick, your feeling about how this game turned around here. Purdue was in it. It was only 7-3. And what happened here? Well, they were moving the ball nicely and going in maybe for the possible touchdown, and they didn't get executed the little shuffle pass. Remember that? And then they had to go ahead and get the field goal. If they'd have been able to go in and score at that time, I think they would have been able to come up with a little more momentum than they would have out of that three-point play. But I think the other thing that's happened is Iowa's offensive coaches said, hey, guys, they're stopping our running game. Let's get the ball in the air and get after them. And that's really opened it up. Well, they'll go for it on fourth down for the second time today. They failed their first effort, and this is fourth and five. They haven't been able to find Titley the tight end yet here today. Rodgers back under pressure. Fumble, Purdue went after it, and it doesn't matter. It's fourth down anyway. Purdue ball. It doesn't matter who recovered it. It's fourth down. And that was Jarrett Scales who got in defensively. Now, see, people are going to criticize or wonder why they didn't go for a field goal. See, 14 to 3 in a position to kick a field goal, and they elected to go for the first down. That's the chances you take. Dick, I believe Rodgers is on the bottom here with Scanina going after him. Let's take a look. This is fourth down. Play action pass, crossing patterns again. He sets up. Now, you'll see him flash right around there. The knocks the ball out. That's Jared. It's on the ground. See if we can find. There's the ball right in the center of the screen. Taking a, a look at it from the top, you'll see right here, he's going to come off the corner. Jarrett Scales, weak corner blitz. Here he comes in. He's not fake. There's too many guys to block. Here he hits the ball. He's got it. Now it's on the, the ball is loose again on that shot. Two and a half minutes to work with. Hunter firing complete, and Callaway stops the clock by going out of bounds on the far side. You can see why they call Eric Hunter GE, General Electric. They say they call him that because he lights up the offense. <laughs> he can light it up. That ball, the trajectory of that ball is just flat and just straight as an arrow. A lot of velocity. Second down. Now Hunter. Whew. Complete at midfield. Oh. What a blow by Melvin Foster on Jermaine Ross. I mean, 66 came in unloaded. And there's a Hawkeye down at midfield, Leroy Smith, injured on the play. I'll tell you, that Eric Hunter throws those big, deep curls I mean, as well as anybody we've seen in a couple of years. Those things are like on a frozen rope. That was one of the best hits of the game by Melvin Foster. Melvin Foster's to the right center of your screen right there. 
He drops out. He's dropping out, playing zone. He'll come from the right side now. He'll flash crossing pattern. He's coming underneath. Here he comes. Boom! <laughs> That's why, you, do, as a receiver, uh, catching those balls all over the middle, you need pretty good insurance policies. Mr. Foster, he, he can put you down. There's Leroy Smith coming out. We talked about him earlier. Great speed for an outside linebacker position. There's an unease here because I think everyone remembers what Ohio State did in the closing moments of the first half a week ago. Eric Hunter driving Purdue again. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Three wide receivers are off to his left. Iowa's fouled up a little bit in lining up. You see him all moving around there. Wells comes through. Oglesby picks him up incomplete. Iowa was, was confused in personnel alignment that time when they lined up late. Sometimes that can help you because you line up in a position not uh, prepared for by the offensive team and you'll come in there and get a pretty good rush. Because it's just a different thing. You haven't seen it. But there was confusion. Well, again, for some reason, Rod Davis not playing on the nose today. And Mike Wells, 64, has gone the entire game. Complete. Dangerous pass to the sideline and Tony Benson. You know, a quarterback with normal arm strength would get that ball intercepted. But that ball gets there with such velocity that he can throw that kind of ball parallel to the line of scrimmage and across the field. Purdue with one timeout left. 1.45 to go. They need eight yards here for a first down. They're coming after him. Hunter on the road, being chased way back, throws out of bounds, and it will be fourth down with 1.28. And now, a tough call for Fred Akers. Those were good defensive calls by Bill Brazier. He said to heck with it. We're going to get pressure on this guy because if we give him time, he throws the strike. We've got to get heat on him and flush him, and that's exactly what he did. He brought seven people after him. Eric Broom to punt. Fred Akers does not want to give Isle with a ball near midfield with a minute and a half and two timeouts to work with. Handle it back to return, standing on the Iowa 12-yard line. High punt, should give the coverage men time. Fair catch is the signal, and it will be Iowa's ball on the 12. You know, that's a left-footed punter back there in Eric Brune, and that ball goes up in the air and comes down with a different spin. And you really gotta watch it. Now, don't smile at me when I say that. That's true, it really does. It comes down with a different float to it than it does if it's spinning the other way coming off a right foot. Okay, my man. <laughs> <laughs> we remind kidding, everybody that next Saturday on ABC Sports, the Skins game comes to ABC, and it'll be Greg Norman, Jack Nicholas, Nick Faldo, Curtis Strange. That's always a great show. The Skins game, Thanksgiving weekend on ABC, 3.30 Eastern Time. Dick? The thing right now you better do is now go back to your conservative approach. Don't turn the ball over down here and fire up Purdue because these kids are playing hard. They came here to win the football game. They'll do just that. Stewart coming wide. Almost found himself an alley, didn't he? Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Danon Hughes, number three, threw a good block, leading him for a 13-yard gain. He did a real good job of reading the blocks of this offensive lineman as they come out of here. They run counteraction, faking one way, freeze the linebackers. They'll pull the offensive lineman to the left side of your screen. You see him fly. Now they give it back, and you pick it up here. He reads the blocks. He gets a great block by the wide receiver, Dan and Hughes, number three. And there he is, outside running, clean for the first down. Nine carries, 42 yards. Backs are split behind Rodgers. Complete to Hughes. Jackson again there with coverage and keeps him from gaining the first down. That Jackson is something. He is something, but that Dan and Hughes is a strong runner. He was pulling him. Now he's an outfielder on the baseball team. I didn't know he was that strong a runner. On second and two, 
Rodgers fires for the first down to Balloon. Stops the clock. Stops the clock with 41 seconds to go. The ball near midfield. And Iowa maneuvering for strike position with two timeouts to go and 41 seconds. They're coming here. You'll see him sprint out to the left side of the screen. Now he's going to start out and just sprint. He just wants to get outside away from the rush. He gets good blocking. And we're back playing football. Same type of action. Sprint out. He's going to go out. Can it go deep? But he overthrows. No. Balloon. And there's a penalty flag thrown back in the direction of where the offensive line might have been called for holding. They thought they might get him in man-to-man -man coverage, so they ran the out and up. They did. They went to zone. Good defensive call changeup by Phil Bennett. Caught him off balance. Take him back. That's right, Coach Akers. Take him back. <laughs> Lou Montgomery, the blocking back that time, was guilty of the holding. 32 seconds to go. Hayden now has a decision to make whether or not just to run it out and go into the locker room up 14-3. That's really not Hayden's personality. You know? He's an attack guy. Boy, does he do a good job of coaching. Over the years in the Big Ten, I, I'd say he's probably done as good a job or better than anybody, has he not? I really agree with that. Yeah. In recruiting, he's done a great job. The players, the, the kids you visit with here on when you're on campus, class kids, academics, all, they're, they're, their thinking is all, uh, the priorities are right, attitude good. Got a heck of a program going. Rogers, you were right. Rogers keeps it. Out to the 40 yard line. And timeout is called Iowa with two timeouts. And that clock didn't move much. <laughs> that That's, happened last week, too. Yeah. You know, that happened last week. And they ended up killing him. The last play of each game, they, the clock. Uh, did move yeah. a couple times. And, and Hayden said you would think at home that the home field, you know what? He's trying to give him a seconds back this week. <laughs> <laughs> Hayden was really dejected after last week. Let's take a look at what happened. And here were the coach's thoughts on that devastating loss. Well, actually, when uh, Greg Fry of Ohio State completed the pass to Olive on the last play of the game last week, uh, uh, first thoughts were that, gee, our, our players have played so hard, so well into our game, they deserve a better faith than this, and it just really gutted me. Yeah, I think it gutted a whole lot of folks around here, and it took the Hawkeyes some time this afternoon to climb back into this one. The officials took five seconds off the clock. I'll tell you this, I think it was also slowed them climbing into this one is, is Purdue came here to play. They were well prepared, and they came to play, and they're still in the ballgame. Good defense. Incomplete, and you know who that was, That's Steve Jackson. Jackson. He's as good a cover man as we've seen this year. Yeah, he hasn't intercepted many balls in his career, but he's knocked 34 passes down. That would be 35 or 36 down, and that's more than anybody in the history of Purdue defense. Pretty darn good job. You see on your screen there, Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator, he wasn't telling him to put it in his ear. He was just telling him to listen to what I have you to say. <laughs> The officials apparently made that an official's timeout, so the Hawkeyes have two, but only 20 seconds with which to work here. Rogers tries to hit Stewart as he was in the grasp of Frank Komet, number 73. Five seconds expire. Again, they tried the out and up. They wanted to run the out and up, but again, they're, they're playing zone within this situation. If they want to run the out and ups, wait to the second half on those first and second rundowns and go the out and up against those man-to-man -man coverages. Well, here's a situation with Hyzak back there that Purdue figures with 15 seconds to go. Will they come after it and try to block this punt? I don't think so. I think they'll just go ahead and, and I mean, they'll have their normal. Hey, they did come after it. They did come after it. And they roughed it. You know, I just wait a minute. There is no flag. They'll pick the flag up because the ball was hit. They tipped the ball, so they did not rough the punter. The ball was tipped. And I think that's what Tom will explain. The ball was tipped. There'll be no running in. We have defense off top. See, that's why yeah. if I were on the sidelines, see, I would worry about roughing the kicker and giving and, and uh, giving them the ball right, you know, back and that kind of stuff. And so no roughing, but the defense was offside. 
that's not going to change. And it was fourth and 13 back at the 40. So a five yard penalty will not give Iowa a first down. It was only a 25 yard punt by the Hawkeyes. See what Coach Akers was thinking with the rush. Well, if I block it, bat it down, we get it, Dak Bear. We're in position for a long field goal attempt. He's thinking about three points. <laughs> well, there's the last play before the half, we saw a ball last week batted in the air and caught by the receiver and ran in for a touchdown against Iowa. So we know those kind of things can happen. Five seconds. Smith drops off as an added defensive back and a misread there by someone. Still three seconds to go. McManus cut in and Hunter threw out. He On the run it. and shoot, Dick, the receivers are reading along with the quarterback. Yeah, the trouble, the receivers read the defense. The quarterback reads the defense and the receivers. And what's taking Hunter just a little longer as, as a young football player, this is only his 14th really full football game, is to get both of those reads in coordination with the receiver. So these four wide receivers, if they come off the line. They all come off. They all come off reading what's happening down here. That time incomplete, and that'll do it for the first half. That's a defensive penalty. I don't know if it, they can't end on a defensive penalty here. There's a defensive penalty. They call, I think they call roughing the passer on Mike Wells, number 64. Yeah. I mean, that's, it. that's it. <laughs> Mike was in the office the other day looking at tape as we were looking at tape. He's a good, strong guy. He won the state. Shot but championship. We have roughing the passer. And the last time down the period, we'll have a one untimed down. One untimed down. You heard that call before? One untimed down. Yeah. Sounds good, doesn't it? After they march off the yardage, this you know is what? gonna be 15 yard penalty against the Hawkeyes. Gonna bring that ball to midfield. And this could be an explosive on time down. I'll tell you one time down on me one time. When playing a Monday night game, and I told the quarterback on the last play before the half just to hand off what we call 37 power O to the running back. And he did it. And you know what happened? The defender took the ball away from the running back and ran it in for a touchdown. You know, Hunter had to leave. And Scott Hoffman, the backup quarterback, is going to be in the game. They took Hunter off to the locker room. And Hoffman, the backup, He's not going to run 50 yards. No. That'll bring the first half to an end. Jeff Nelson was there defensively for the Hawkeyes. And the Hawkeyes will mass up and leave field as a group here. Iowa 14, Purdue 3. Corey McFerrin is coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. ABC's College Football, brought to you by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. And by Michelob Dry Beer. Once you experience the bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back.